uh, when you see that happen. Um, you know, all respect due to him, and uh, you know, I'm a missing just because my brother, but it was like it's my time. Um, you know, I feel like Baltimore drafted me for a reason. Uh, they drafted me to be in this position, and for me, this like all I've been waiting on is the opportunity. Um, I know what I'm capable of. I feel like the Ravens organization know what I'm capable of. Fan TV, back at you another video. How y'all doing, man? Hey, y'all should go check out the interview uh, with Shaw Bateman, Studio 44, with uh, Marlon Humphrey. Good interview, a lot of uh, information, a lot of backstory about with Shaw Bateman that we you know that I didn't know personally. Maybe some of y'all know, but I, I didn't know personally. So I just kind of wanted to give a breakdown of the interview. You know what I mean? Then y'all can go watch it for yourself if you, if you haven't already seen it. Um, so basically. He starts off talking about, um, you know, how he had his, you know, interest from fashion and things like that. You know, like, like, like a lot of players do in the NFL, you know, a lot of guys nowadays are very interested in the fashion and the clothes and the drip that they got on. So that was that was cool. Uh, something that was interesting that he brought up was uh, he went, obviously went to college in Minnesota. Minnesota was the first power five school to actually give him a scholarship. And he committed to them like on the spot. It was like he was at a camp or something for Minnesota. Um, and coach, uh, I think his name is Chris Flack, was the head coach. Pretty much said, you had a good camp. We want, to, we want you to commit. And he committed right there. Uh, he said before that, he only had offers from like Georgia Southern and things like that. Um, but after he committed to Minnesota, that's when other, stool, other schools started coming in, AC, ACC, SEC. But he stayed uh, loyal to Minnesota. And, and uh, obviously we know that he had a good career in Minnesota, so it ended up working out for him. Um, something else that stood up about the interview is that Marlon Marlon is, is pretty funny. Uh, Marlon definitely has a future in this interview and media business, and uh, he did a good job with the interview overall. Kept it interesting, asked good questions. Uh, so the next thing he led on to was uh, with Bateman is about draft day, right? And what did you expect? And he said something that was kind of what other draft analysts were saying on uh, draft day. He's, he thought he was going to get drafted by the Green Bay Packers. And I think that's the reason the, how he was drafted where he was by the Ravens is because Green Bay was a team that was kind of the, uh, not supposed to, but uh, linked with Bateman a lot. So him going to the Ravens, I think we picked him maybe uh, two or three spots before Green Bay, maybe right, right before Green Bay. So that was interesting. He said he was on the phone with Green Bay pretty much all day and things like that. Uh, but he did say he thought he was going to go a little bit earlier. And, why, well, he kind of said, I thought I was going to go later, but I was kind of disappointed in where I went, right? So in terms of draft position, he said he was sleeping. His brother went and woke him up at the 25th pick and said, hey, man, come out here, chill with the family. And he ended up getting picked two picks later. So that, that was good. But what stood out to me about that comment was he got that dog mentality. He said, look, I feel like I'm the best guy in this class and I should have been picked as the first receiver taken off the board. So I just think that he has that true wide receiver one kind of mentality from Bateman. And that, that that's that's what I got from him. I mean, and then, you know, we talk about uh, the Hollywood trade. And that's kind of the highlight of the interview to me is that, and that's the main part is, he said that Baltimore drafted me for a reason. It's my time now. And just to hear him say that, it kind of reaffirms that he was the right pick, honestly. I think that he's going to put out there on the field what he's talking about, that it's my time now. I'm wide receiver one on this team. And that um, I'm, I'm going to do my job well. It's like he kind of got a – it's like a quiet confidence. He's not like over the top arrogant or nothing like that. But you can tell he's really confident in his in himself and his play and um, that he's going to put it on the field. So he said that um, – you know, with Hollywood getting traded, he's excited for his opportunity and things like that. But even backtracking to his rookie year, he was he was disappointed in the injury because he felt like he he let the team down by just by getting hurt. So just because, you know, he wanted to play. He wanted to prove that he was worth that first round pick and that first round grade and not being able to be out there with the guys right away to start the season. He was disappointed in that, as he should be. Um you know, but it's all right. People are happy. People get injured in football. It happens, you know, so it's cool. He said that uh, he loved the Ravens fans, loved the environment, that the Chiefs game and the Colts game, you know, those Sunday night games, Monday night games, 
Um, he loved the vibe and the energy in the stadium. That's another thing about Bateman. You go hear the word vibes a lot. He likes to say vibes and have good vibes around him. And something else he mentioned is that when Hollywood got traded, he called a couple of people. He said he called Marlon Humphrey, but he also said he also called James Prochet and said, hey, man, you know, you got to help me in leading the room, which is interesting because you wouldn't think James Prochet be the first guy you call for that, but that's who he called. So James Prochet obviously is a guy who leads by example. He's one of the guys who's first on the jug machines in practice, one of the last guys to leave practice. And Bateman said he's trying to follow that kind of model of kind of being a leader by example. He also mentioned Marlon, too, because it's like Marlon is not a big rah-rah guy in terms of giving speeches and stuff like that, but he leads by example. And he said, I, he said, he said to Marlon, I don't think you notice that I see you, but I see you. And that's motivation for me. So the way he talks, the way he sounds, it's just, it's just a real confident vibe about uh, Rashad Bateman. And it makes me feel good about this upcoming season. And if he stays healthy, he's going to have a really, really good season. Um, let's see. He said that he believes that the Ravens weren't injured last year. Uh, they were a Super Bowl team. We all believe that. It, 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 it's no shock there. Um, he said kind of when he was, um, I guess, in his college, high school days, he lived at the Odell Beckham, which is interesting. But he says now he studies a lot of Devontae Adams. So... If he could be anything 70%, 80% of Devontae Adams, we got a special receiver on our hands because we know how good Devontae Adams is. So the fact that he's studying him and trying to match his craft to that, that's beautiful. That's good to hear. Now, this part gets kind of interesting. He said that he grew up um, a Steelers fan <laughs> because of his dad. So, like, his favorite wide receivers growing up were Hans Ward and Santonio Holmes. And he was like, man, we got to cut that out. <laughs> But, uh, but you know, it's cool. He 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 a Raven now. He said, nah, I'm done with the Steelers. He said, he said he's actually kind of done with the Steelers while he was growing up. So it wasn't like, oh, I, I got drafted by the Ravens and now I'm done. So that was interesting to hear. That was pretty cool. Um, Marlon asked him about, you know, what was toughest about getting uh, adjusted to the NFL. He said it's kind of the schedule. You know, people think that, you know, you in the league, you practice, you have, a, you have one or two meetings and you go home. He's like, no, nah, it's like a real job. You know, I'm here early in the morning to late at night, uh, especially during training camp. Uh, so, like I said, um, he brought up vibes again and wanted to be around good vibes and things like that. Basically, what it sounds like to me is he's a good energy player, and he wants to bring good energy to every room he's in. So now with the wide receiver room, he's kind of – I mean, he is the guy. So he wants to set a good tempo, a good vibe in the room, when he walks in and things like that, because if he's down, other guys might be down, but if he's up, other guys could be up as well. So I thought that was cool. Um, it sounds like in year two, he's really looking forward to be a leader. That don't mean he's going to be talking, giving speeches, like I said, but just being a leader by example and really kind of uh, set, setting, the, uh, setting the example for the guys, right? And um, that was that's kind of just the interview. It was a lot of reaffirmations for Ravens fans that this is the guy. He's confident in what he does. Uh, that quiet confidence, that humble nature. But, like, you could tell he a dog on the field. and He got that mentality, like, can't nobody stop me. Like, at the end of the interview, he taught, he brought up on Marlon that he caught that touchdown on him in training camp uh, at the um, at the stadium practice. And Marlon was like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Try to act like he forgot and things like that. But, you know. Bateman, it said, him and Marlon said that I'm looking forward to them training camp practices again because you get me better. That's what Marlon was saying to him. And he's saying that you were the quickest wide receiver on our team last year. So when you went down with an injury, that was key reps that I lost going against a, you know, a top quality kind of player. It wasn't really throwing no shot at nobody else, but he was just kind of saying that Bateman was the best guy. And, I, and it's, it's, a, it's a fact, you know. He should be that guy. He was a first-round pick for that reason. So, Marlon sees it in Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman sees it in himself. The coaches see it in Rashad Bateman. So, and the fans, we see it as well. So, I thought that it was a good interview. You guys should check it out. Um, like I said, man, the thing that things that kept coming back to me is that he is confident about his play and that he said that he's aware of the Ravens wide receiver struggles and drafting and things like that, and he wants to be the guy to change that. So, uh, I think he will be that guy. Um, give me y'all predictions for what y'all think Rashad Bateman's going to do this year. Let me know. 
Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.